What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about personalized nutrition. But before we get started, click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for algorithm for the algo. This week we're gonna discuss a new study on personalized nutrition versus general nutrition advice. Some of you guys may have seen these new companies that are coming out where you can do a saliva sample or a blood sample and they'll take all these metabolites and look at your DNA and they'll give you a diet based off your DNA and individual metabolome. So basically what they're looking at is like markers of inflammation, insulin sensitivity, blood lipids, those sorts of things. That's as far as metabolites. Then they're also looking at genetic polymorphisms that could possibly affect how you metabolize different Different things and thus many of these companies have claimed that they can provide you superior nutrition advice based on your genes and your metabolome. Now I've been somebody who's been skeptical of this in the past and mostly because while we can sequence the genome and we can point out these polymorphisms we don't completely understand the downstream effects of each and we don't understand how that interplays with various dietary manipulations. However that has not stopped companies from making claims based on these polymorphisms and metabolites. This study sought to examine whether or not a personalized nutrition plan created for each subject based on their metabolome and polymorphisms on their genes could produce better results for fat loss and health compared to just generalized healthy diet advice. So this was called the Preventomics Study. It was a 10-week double-blinded randomized control trial with 100 adults. Now the control group was basically a group that was just given kind of general healthy diet advice. It was mostly a plant-based diet. They provided most of the meals to participants, I think of the 21 weekly meals, they provided 12 and then gave dietary advice on the other meals. And they had food recall logs twice a week to assess adherence. Now what's cool about the preventonomics group or the treatment group is they stratified them into different clusters based on their metabolome, polymorphisms on their genes. And this was done through a really advanced algorithm. So I'm gonna read from the study. Participants were allocated in a one-to-one -one ratio stratified by cluster, oxidative stress, inflammation, carbohydrate metabolism, lipid metabolism, microbiota generated metabolites to either the intervention group or the control group. So they're looking at all these different things like oxidative stress, inflammation, carbohydrate metabolism, lipid metabolism, even your gut microbiota. We are just clicking on all the clickbait titles out there in YouTube and Instagram land. All these things that everybody says, oh, don't worry about a calorie deficit. You gotta fix your inflammation first. What about your oxidation? What about your gut microbiota? We finna find out. Now, of the people randomized to the treatment group, here's some more details on the clustering of these individuals. All participants were classified by the Preventomics platform into one of five predefined clusters based on A, the subject's metabolome analysis of 51 biomarkers quantified in a pre-baseline urine, plasma, and serum samples. That's pretty comprehensive metabolome. And also pre-baseline saliva analysis of 35 different SNPs or polymorphisms, which is basically single nucleotide swaps. So single nucleotide polymorphisms are where one nucleotide can be switched for a different nucleotide compared to what your normal genetic sequence is. And we believe that these polymorphisms can have downstream effects in terms of uh, your metabolism. The specific SNPs together with the biomarkers provided a score for each cluster using proprietary algorithm for any given participant considering both the absolute value of the biomarker in the biofluid and the biological relevance of the biomarker in the metabolic cluster. Sounds fancy as hell. And so basically they gave as much information as they could. They referenced another study where they included kind of all the analysis and how they did it and their justification for doing it. And they did say that the algorithm they used was proprietary because it's patent pending and so they couldn't disclose how the algorithm worked. Totally get it. They did these for 10 weeks and the only dietary difference in terms of macronutrients was basically that the personalized group got more dietary fiber, almost twice the amount of dietary fiber, which is great. But the control group still got a large amount of dietary fiber. So both groups were high fiber groups. It's just that the personalized groups or the personalized clusters were getting even more fiber. Now, what were the results? I am sorry to tell you all, you are gonna be very disappointed. I am just going to run down the list of everything that was measured in this study. Body weight, body mass index, waist circumference, lean body mass, fat mass, visceral adipose tissue, total body fat percentage, blood pressure, 
pulse, lipid profile, including total cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and triglycerides. Glucose metabolism, so fasting glucose, fasting insulin, HOMA IR, which measures insulin sensitivity. Inflammatory markers, such as oxidative LDL, CRP, TNF alpha, IL-6, IL-10, ICAM-1, CD-14, MCP-1, adipokines, including leptin and adiponectin, liver and renal biomarkers, ALT, GGT, creatinine, uric acid. They measured physical activity levels, and they measured kind of a score of disordered eating. A lot of stuff. The only significant difference of any of these markers was in the questionnaire that kind of looks at disinhibition in response to dieting. So the inclination to kind of overeat or binge eat, which was actually slightly higher in the personalized group. Every single other marker, all the inflammation, all the glucose metabolism, all the anthropometrics, all the vital signs, all that stuff. No difference between the personalized plans, and the control group. Both groups lost weight, both groups lost body fat, about two kilos, and both groups improved most of their biomarkers. But there was no difference in the improvements between the groups. And this even held true when they separated out the clusters. So in this analysis, they're just comparing the personalized plan as a whole, all those participants, to the control group. But they actually took out each individual cluster. Remember, there was five clusters. They actually took out each individual cluster compared to the control group and still found no differences. This is quite honestly right in line what they found with other studies when they try to do personalized nutrition based on their genes or metabolites. In fact, the diet fit study assigned people to a low carbohydrate or low fat diet based on their basal levels of insulin secretion and insulin sensitivity and some genetic polymorphisms and found absolutely no difference in weight loss or improvements in most markers of health between the two groups. And that was a 12 month study. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you are not unicorns. You're not a unicorn. Perhaps at some point we will have information that allows us to make specific nutritional adjustments based on your genes or metabolome. But we do not have that information at the moment. And these companies marketing this idea that they can produce the best diet for you based on your genes are straight up full of it and not supported by any research data whatsoever. They are just looking to extract money from you. I'm sorry, that is the facts based on the evidence. This falls in line with so much stuff I've observed. I can't tell you how many people have said, well, calorie deficit doesn't work for me because I have this, or I, I, it doesn't work because I did, I have that. It works. I'm sorry, it works. Maybe, just maybe, you're an outlier, which means you might need a little bit more of a quote unquote extreme treatment towards one end or the other. But in terms of the vast majority of people, we know what works for fat loss in improving your metabolic health. A calorie deficit coupled with, in my opinion, a higher protein diet with plenty of fiber and then allotting your carbohydrates and fats in a way that is sustainable for you. Whatever that breakdown is, is what it is. Many of you have strong feelings about this, but data is more important than your feelings. All right, guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment telling me how you are in fact a unicorn and you know this because of your feelings. And if you want to get the data over feelings hat, make sure you click the link in the description and I will catch you next week.